Hello and welcome to DTV, your source for news and information about the Knox County Democratic Party. I'm Michael Davis, your host for this program segment with Sam Brown, candidate for the Tennessee Senate in District 6. Knox County voters, voters will go to the polls this August to choose their Democratic candidate for District 6 in the Democratic primary, with a winner facing incumbent Republican Becky Duncan Massey. This race is getting a lot of attention as it's one Democrats believe they can flip in November. Sam Brown is hoping to be that candidate and we welcome here, him here to DTV. Sam, thank you very much for being here with us today and welcome to DTV. Thank you so much for having me, Mike. Thank you very much. Well. Good to be here. Good to have you. Uh, primaries fast approaching and uh, campaign difficulties still remain with everything going on with the pandemic. Uh, so how has your campaign been going uh, amidst all of this with, uh, with social distancing in place, uh, with uh, how's that impacted your campaign, reaching out to people and, and spreading word about you? Well, it, it really hasn't impacted it that much. Um, the only thing that we're limited on, of course, we've uh, opted not to do any door-to-door -door knocking as of yet. And that's just because we want to respect what we feel person's uh, level of comfortability would be uh, mm -hmm. in Knox County. Uh, we've had uh, for the past, uh, well, really almost month and a half, had a great opportunity uh, to call the voters um, in District 6 to inform them of what our platform is and how we uh, desire to serve them uh, once elected in November. Uh, we have a wonderful campaign team. Our communications campaign manager, Matthew Bess, is uh, doing an excellent job of making sure there is a, a, a stream of communication from the campaign to um, all of the voters in Knox County, informing them of what we are doing and how we are getting our message out there. Okay. Well, what are some of the chief things that have motivated you to seek this office? Uh, things in your history, uh, things in your uh, that have really propelled you that you've seen uh, to want to to uh, represent people in your district. Yes. Yeah, so I was. Um, uh, reared with a strong sense of responsibility, and um, it had put within me a sense of leadership for a long time, um, even going all the way back to my former years as a student in Knox County. Um, I was always serving in leadership roles and eventually uh, became president of my graduating class from Austin East High School. Um, had always been involved in student government. Um, from uh, when I began undergrad at Livingstone College, uh, majored in political science, uh, which of course gives one an academic understanding of government and how, led, how the legislative process works. And then we were able to gain practical experience uh, through, two, through two internships, uh, one working there in the city of Salisbury, uh, in the city manager's offices and, and then eventually uh, serving as an intern for the Democratic National Convention in 2012 in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, working for John Paoli, who at that time uh, was the state chair for the Delaware Democratic Party. Uh, so that was a wonderful experience to really uh, see how um, the Democratic Party uh, really uh, commits itself to uh, making sure that the um, the, the government or the positions that they are seeking uh, to be elected to across the nation are um, ways for uh, change to be made and so that all the citizens in this country uh, can be served. Right. Uh, with so much experience within the Democratic Party, how do you see uh, Democratic values playing out in, uh, in the state level, in a, in a state Senate such as Tennessee's? How can, how do they, uh, influence, how can they better influence change? Why would you be a candidate uh, or, a, or, a, or a senator that would bring those kinds of values uh, into actual policy? Yeah, I believe that it's important to always go into that with a knowledge of uh, what people's experiences are. Mm -hmm. And so um, my vocation now, the reason I am back in uh, Knoxville uh, is because I was uh, sent back by my bishop to pastor a church uh, in East Knoxville, the Logan Temple AME Zion Church. And uh, having been extended the opportunity to serve on several uh, community boards uh, with Project Grad, 
uh, being able now just being named to serve on the superintendent's reentry task force uh, for this upcoming academic school year. And so taking all of those experiences just as a regular community member with the practical experience and academic training I've had, taking that to Nashville and being able to uh, make sure that what the uh, tenets and the values of the Democratic Party are, making sure that we not only herald them, but have a, a strategy of, and that also includes compromise, uh, to making sure that we get bills passed uh, that that really serve all Tennesseans. And I think that's what's really great about the Democratic Party. We're not looking out only for Democrats, right? Um, what, what speaks to us as Democrats is just what we value, and, but it doesn't really speak to who we value. Right, we, we, we value the, the working class across the board, whether you vote for GOP in November or whether you vote for Democrat, the Democratic Party still uh, wants to enact policy uh, that serves you well. And so I think that that is important that we can communicate that message that we're here to really uh, better the lives for every Tennessean. Right. Yeah, I think that's an important point that gets missed sometimes. When you're elected uh, something like state senator, you're everyone's senator for that district, uh, right. not just the ones that elected you. Uh, so you've got a big focus on education. Uh, yes, as you said, as you stated, you were a graduate from Austin East High School. Uh, you've seen uh, Knox County uh, education, which uh, also relates to a lot of other uh, similar situations throughout the state. What are what would be some of your policy uh, objectives for education in Tennessee? Yeah, I believe that we have to have a strong focus on intentional uh, diversity. Um, I think there has to be um, diversity, diverse representation as far as our faculty. There has to be diverse representation in administrators. There also has to be some diverse representation when we talk about our curriculum and what we expose our students to. Um, I do realize that every student in the state of Tennessee that graduates and gets uh, awarded a high school diploma, uh, it may not be in the best interest of their personal success to go to a four-year liberal arts institution. They may need to go to a vocational or technical training in which they can um, really make a substantial living uh, learning a trade or a skill. And making sure that we instill um, that exposure to other cultures, to other people in them as soon as we can, I think it helps to um, really uh, grow better adults. And so we don't deal with a lot of the issues uh, that we are still dealing with the residue of today. Right. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit specifically about District 6. What, how, how large is it? Where are its boundaries? What communities are, are included? Yeah, uh, so District 6, for one, is the largest a senatorial district um, in Knox County. Um, Knox County is made up of three uh, senatorial districts. Uh, Senate six, district six is the largest. It really spans the entire length of the county, east to west, um, as far east as Mascot, Kodak, uh, Corrington, and Carter, and then as far west as Concord, all the way out there in district five. So um, you have a broad a uh, spectrum of concerns and, and the desires that people want. It includes neighborhoods like the one I grew up in, Park Ridge, uh, but it also includes, like I said, the Concord area. Um, it, inclu it includes Sequoia Hills, uh, but it also includes some very impoverished areas there around the Sutherland Avenue area. So I think it's important to know that you have to go in there with the mindset of I'm here serving a, a broad base of people. You know, and some people, because of their day-to-day -day lives, may not have had the opportunity to make it to me to tell me what they want or what they desire or what they need. So as an elected legislator, it would be my job to make sure I reach out to them to see uh, what they need to help make their lives better. Uh, as far as economic development within the district, uh, how will you approach that with so many broad concerns at play? I think that we need to really focus on, Mike, you know, uplifting of the very, very least of these. Uh, for so long, there are so many uh, people and so many communities that have been marginalized that really have not even had an opportunity uh, to get uh, a hand up, uh, so to speak, for um, being able to go out on there and take this. So I think all of the policies that we enact, we need to make sure that the very, very least of these are able to take advantage of them first, because for so long, so many others have only been served. Okay. 
Uh, right now, we're seeing a, a time of, of unrest uh, in the wake of uh, the country being shocked yet again by the killing of another black man in police custody. Mm -hmm. uh, referencing, of course, the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. We're seeing a lot of engagement in, uh, in people and activism. And uh, does this, do you believe that this will translate into real civic engagement and real uh, change at the voting booth? And how would you plan to, to take, uh, to use that energy if you're elected uh, this November to, to bring about some, some, some change. And also what sort of, are there any specific things that you think uh, could help with this situation of, of, uh, with policing? Yes. Well, first, the first goal uh, for Sam Brown in this election, I want to get more people to the polls, right? Win, lose, draw, whatever. I want to be able to say from this campaign, I brought out X amount of new voters because I feel that your access and your participation in the voting ballot uh, translates then to your participation in other levels. And so it was, I, I think that it's only by the fact that it was instilled in me the importance of voting that I'm even running as a senator today at this age, you know. And so the more people you have at the table, the more people you have engaged in participating in this, the better chance you have of, uh, for policy coming out that has voices and experiences of everybody uh, contributing to it so, so that no one is left out. Right, so that no one misses out on what's available, and and engaging the voters is the most important thing. It's the absolute most important thing. Okay. Well, uh, great to hear that you're planning on on taking uh, some hold of that and, and keeping people engaged there. Uh, before, uh, let's see. In terms of, have you thought much about in terms of daily? Uh, legislative work, committee work, where would you like to be involved in uh, in the Senate if you're elected? Yeah, thank you for that question, Mike. Um, I really, really would love to be a part of the Education Committee. Uh, that is something that is important to me. I think it's important to the future and sustainability of Tennessee. Uh, also, state and local government. Uh, I believe that state and local governments need to be strong and able to serve their people uh, and help them to be able to succeed uh, in every absolute way. And then also uh, the commerce and labor. I believe that, um, yeah, the, it needs to be some representation for minorities uh, there on that committee, well, in the Senate as a whole, but especially on that committee and the community that I come from. Well, Sam, uh, as always, uh, these go by too fast, but before we let you go, okay. Uh, can you tell our voters a little bit about how they can get in touch with you and support your campaign? Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much. You may uh, reach out to us at sam 4 senate 6 at gmail.com. Oh, that's my time. I'm sorry. Uh, you, again, that's sam the number 4 senate the number 6 at gmail.com. Our website is the same, sam 4 com, and that is also our tag on all of our social medias, Instagram and Twitter. Um, you may uh, sign up to be a volunteer to do some phone banking. Uh, right now, we're not really doing any canvassing. Uh, we feel that's ill-advised uh, because we're involved in those weekly cohorts with the University of Tennessee Medical Center and the health department. So as soon as we uh, get um, the proper clearance from them where we think it might be safe to do some canvassing, we'll start soliciting volunteers for that. You may go to the website to donate. Uh, give us your number. We'll reach out to you to see where you best fit in uh, with the team and how you can help us win. Okay. So the primary is, uh, that's the mo one of the most important things to let people know here. It is yeah. a contested primary and that date is? Yeah, August the 6th. Right. Uh, so we've got, uh, hopefully everybody will turn out and keep momentum going and vote in these primaries. And uh, anything, any, uh, anything else that you'd like our uh, viewers to know? Yes, just know, uh, viewers of uh, DTV, that I am here uh, wanting to represent you. I am here really wanting to uh, turn Tennessee around. Um, for, to, for too long uh, since I've been uh, back here, I have really seen us uh, kind of descend to a place that is really not who we are. And uh, really what happened for me is when I saw some of the bills that were coming out of this past session, 
uh, it really became a matter of importance to me. And I said, you know what, I can't not do anything. These are the people I love and who I'm serving. So that's why I'm offering myself. Okay. Thank you for those words, Sam. And thank you for being here with us. And thanks everyone for watching. This has been DTV. I'm Michael Davis, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Michael. Thank you.